if you recall, uh, we have been looking at this idea of integration, and integration is about solving a particular kind of problem. Do you remember that? What kind of problem were we trying to solve? Area. area very good. Um, the area under a curvy thing, right? Like we know the areas of like polygons, and we can the circle is a very specific example. But all of those kinds of things were limited to like the measurement formulas, right? So integrals were the idea of trying to divide up this curved area into, and if you remember, an infinite series of infinitesimally thin rectangles. And then you integrate them, you combine them into a whole, and then ta-da, there's your area. Okay? Now you might recall that we said something like this, right? This is the way you would find such an area, right? If you've got some function f, it traces out a curve, and the particular area that you're interested in the interval over which you will integrate from A to B, that'll give you the area. And I gave this a special name, we called it a definite integral. Right? So just pop this down, just to remind you, and so that by way of contrast, you'll see what I'm talking about today. Okay. Now, I said it's called a definite integral. I made no explanation, good morning, no explanation as to why it was called that, but it does kind of beg the question, what kind of other integrals are there? And the answer is, Indefinite integrals, okay? Now, a definite integral and an indefinite integral look very, very similar because they're both integrals. Here's the difference. An indefinite integral has no boundaries. It doesn't have an upper and lower bound. You're not integrating from here to here, right, and finding that little area. You just sort of integrate, right? So this is an indefinite integral. Now, if you recall, Coming back to um, definite integral land, right? What you do is it's connected to the primitive function, right? You find the primitive of f, then you evaluate it at b, and you take it away from evaluating it at a, okay? So being finding the primitive is kind of what is like the engine that makes this work. Finding an indefinite integral is, is still finding that primitive function, but then you just don't evaluate in anything into that, okay? Now, this is kind of strange. This is kind of strange. Because as we just reviewed, right, integrations that solve this problem of area, this doesn't tell you an area. Because it's like, well, where's your area? And the answer is, it's nowhere. It's not an area, okay? Definite integrals are a number. This is how big the area is. An indefinite integral is a function. In fact, it is the primitive function. In fact, for all intents and purposes, it's another name for the primitive function. Because what you get is that primitive, right, capital F, and it will be um, off by a constant, right? Now, I just need to quickly pause before we go into, like, I could just get you to start computing some of these indefinite integrals, right? And believe me, you will, okay? But we have to ask the question, why on earth would we do this, right? Why would we leave behind the boundaries? Because when you, the boundaries are the thing that makes this useful, right? They're the things that give you an area, okay? And to answer that question, I want to point you to this number. Now, I hope a lot of you recognize this number. What is this number? A big number. Does anyone oh, recognize what the speed of causality is? It's, it's the speed of... <laughs> okay, now, what speed of now, 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 I'm so glad some people know the difference. The, the, the traditional name for this, in meters per second, right, is this is the speed of light, okay? Now, we need to pause on this for a second, right, and explain, for those of you like me who didn't do physics, <laughs> Now I know who the physics nerds are. Um, <laughs> 299,792,458 meters per second. The name it has gotten is the speed of light. Okay. However. It is quite a bit more than the speed of light. The reason it gets the name the speed of light is because it was first encountered when physicists were trying to answer two questions. Number one, is light, does light travel instantaneously? Right? It certainly feels like it travels instantaneously, right? But things, you know, our perceptions are quite slow, really. So we didn't know. We didn't know. Does it travel instantaneously or not? That was the first question. They answered that question, no. It doesn't, right? So then, of course, the secondary question that it begs is: well, if it doesn't travel instantaneously, how fast does it travel, okay? Now, it's a whole another exciting story about how they determined that this is how fast it traveled, right? But since light and its speed was the problem they were trying to solve, well, that's the name that got attached to this. Well, it's the speed of light, okay? 
But of course, physicists didn't stop there, and they discovered actually, it's more than just the speed of light. Uh, for starters, it's the speed of everything that travels that has no mass, okay? So that includes photons, which means all e electromagnetic radiation travels at that speed. Uh, it includes anything which doesn't have mass, like for example, the other big example we know about is gluons, which are the names of the things that transmit the force that keeps atomic nuclei together, okay? Um, also travel at this speed, because they also do not have mass. But it's even more than that. It's even more than a speed, and I'm not going to dig into this at all. But everyone pretty much in the world, like this might be the most famous equation in the world. What it connects, what it connects is the quantity of energy and the quantity of mass that corresponds to that amount of energy. Okay? In other words, a little bit of mass is a lot of energy, right? Because you're multiplying by this astronomically, literally, astronomically large number. Okay? Now hold on, why on earth would the speed of light have anything to do with connecting these two quantities together? And the answer is, this is something deeper and more profound than just how fast light travels, right? It says something very, very um, deep and amazing and profound about the connection between energy and mass and relativity, right? So this is more than just the speed of light. In exactly the same way that this is about so much more than area, okay? This is, area is the, the kind of problem we were trying to initially solve, right? But then integration, it just, it's amazing, right? It does a lot more than just add up a whole bunch of infinitely thin rectangles, okay? Hence this, all right? And we sort of unshackle it away from this idea of area. Now, I just, I can't help myself. I have to very, very quickly give you a taste of what I mean, okay? Quickly draw for me. Um, underneath here, right? What we're talking about is something like, oh, okay, here's, here's a function, right? Here's a value A, here's a value B, okay? And this is what I'm adding up. Like I said, this infinite, infinite series of infinitesimally thin rectangles. That's what it's all about, okay? But in fact, integrals can add up an infinite series of infinitesimally small anything, anything. Okay, let me try and illustrate this one. I'm going to give you two examples that are really fun and we're going to blow open the door as we move further into this topic. Okay, here's my first fun example. We developed this idea for the area of a circle uh, very, very early on and we do it in a fairly intuitive way. Like we, we divide this thing up into an infinitesimally, uh, sorry, an infinite number of infinitesimally thin triangles like this. Okay. And uh, that's one way to do it, okay? But a lot of you, actually, some of you explicitly mentioned to me, hold on, we know what the area of a circle is. We also know what the circumference of a circle is. And the second you learn differentiation, you look at that and you're like, what? Why, why is that? Why are these two things seemingly connected by differentiation? And the answer is, well, good morning they're not so much connected by differentiation as they are connected by integration. Let me show you. 